Yo, what's up fellas? French Fry Warrior here, and today we have gathered here to go over Records of Ragnarok Chapter 92. This chapter is a nice and juicy one, so here's your one obvious spoiler, and let's do a quick review of the previous chapter before going over the new one. In the last chapter, we began with Hollock asking Jack what he would do against Susano's Amano Magaishi technique. Jack responded confidently saying he would do whatever it took to destroy the core of the technique, being his left hand. He also notes the versatility of this technique since it has devastating power at a long range and requires no preparation while still being deadly at a short range. Despite this understanding, Okita charged in again, this time with rapid left to right dashes. Hermes questioned this tactic, wondering if Okita was searching for an opening. Zeus believes such a play would be useless because all he's still doing is giving Susano time to power up, making this next attack a potentially fatal blow. Susano realizes the perfect opportunity and launches his attack. Okita leaped into the air to evade it, but this maneuver left him vulnerable to a follow up strike. Susano claims it's over as he strikes at Okita, and everyone thought that Okita's time was upon him. But only he was the one who thought differently and smiled. He threw his sword at Susano's feet, throwing him off balance and causing him to miss the attack. Seizing this moment, Okita landed and sliced off Susano's foot, putting him in a vulnerable position. This allowed Okita to leap into the air, aiming to deliver a fatal blow. However, Susano did not falter. Thanks to his mastery of the eye technique, he could react and counter from any position. Even in his compromised state, Susano managed to launch another Amanomagaishi. This caught Okita off guard, and the attack dealt a grievous injury, with Susano also declaring his victory. Is this truly the moment where Susano's triumph is realized? Or does Okita still have the strength to continue fighting despite that devastating blow? With this new chapter, we open up with an Okita flashback and him stating that he has yet to fulfill his promise to Kondo. Okita and Kondo are walking through a town and Okita apologizes to Kondo for losing control of his demon powers and harming someone at his training camp. Burdened by guilt, Okita sees himself as nothing more than a source of trouble for Kondo. However, Kondo dismisses this notion, reassuring Okita that he knew what he was getting himself into when he decided to take care of him, even if that includes the demon within him. Kondo will accept everything and anything about Okita. Not convinced yet, Okita only sees himself as a monstrous murderer who can't control himself and doubts he can be a true samurai like Kondo. Kondo asks if he knows what the Bu in Bushi means, Bushi meaning samurai. Okita speculates that it means the power to kill enemies and Kondo acknowledges that Okita isn't entirely wrong but explains that the true meaning lies in staking one's life on one's belief, allowing one to die with a smile on their face. This Kondo believes is the essence of a true samurai. Okita is initially confused by this but Kondo tells Okita that everything is fine and is sure that Okita will understand it one day. Okita questions if someone like him can someday fight like a true samurai with conviction and not like a rampaging monster. Kondo, in a motivating manner, tells Okita that he should simply tell himself, I will become a true samurai. Okita happily agrees and promises Kondo that one day he'll fulfill this goal. We then return to the present where Hemdal comments that Susano won the sword clash revealing Okita's damaged body lying on the ground. Susano relaxes and states he is boiling. The god audience erupts in cheers while Okita's squad looks in disbelief at his condition. Kondo in particular shouts Okita's name, jolting him back into consciousness. Okita slowly begins to rise, reminding himself that he still hasn't fulfilled his promise to Kondo. Everyone is shocked by Okita's determination wondering 
if he can still win. But Okita is resolute and refuses to die until he has fought with all his strength. This moment triggers another flashback in the year 1868, where we see Okita relentlessly training, driven by his desire to be useful to his squad. Here, we learn that Okita became the captain of the first unit of the Shinsengumi and was given the title of being the strongest swordsman of the Bakumatsu. War had broken out and left Kondo and his squad mates in a bad spot fighting for their lives and requiring Okita's assistance. Unfortunately, Okita was unable to join them and fight due to his fatal illness being tuberculosis. Despite his condition, Okita continued to train with desperation, hoping to fight alongside his comrades once more. The narration tells us that Okita fell ill after the Aikadaya incident in 1864. While rumors claim that he passed away quietly in his bed, the narration tells us that isn't what truly happened. Each day, he hoped to fight with his comrades as soon as possible and constantly swung his sword. However, Swinging the sword wasn't getting any easier and he rapidly lost his strength to the point of collapsing on the ground, with his pet black cat watching him too. With his wrinkled fingers, Okita attempts to get up but ends up coughing blood. Next thing he knows, he's brought in his inner consciousness where he sees his inner demon who states it's been a while since they last seen each other, giving us the first actual reveal of Okita's inner demon named Onigo. Here it's explained that Onigo is the most ferocious and strongest battle instinct that Okita possessed since he was born. The price for such a power comes at a great cost being it constantly consumes his own body. Onigo notices that Okita has lost so much weight and senses that their death is upon them, realizing he'll never get to fight again. Okita too realizes he's gonna die soon and is distraught that he had yet to fulfill his promise to Kondo. Onigo tried to convince him that it was useless to continue, that their bodies were failing and that they could no longer fight side by side as Onigo's form begins to fade away. Okita truly does not want to die yet and he wants to swing his sword more with his comrade and Kondo. He stretches his hand out wanting to give so much more and begs for more time as he imagined his whole squad walking forward. After the flashback, Okita stands up and wants to fight more. Everyone in the human's audience cheers for him while one of his squad mates takes notice that Okita's eyes shift from red to blue. Okita acknowledges that his body isn't afflicted like back then and now he can truly go all out, offering to use all his strength with his onigo. Onigo warns Okita that even if Susan was defeated, Okita's death is still certain. Okita doesn't mind this and simply says, that's how samurais are. Surprised at first, Onigo laughs and praises Okita for his answer. He agrees to use everything they have and accepts that they will both die together. Okita's aura explodes while he and Onigo yell to give everything they have. Okita's squad mates realize that the blue color symbolizes the color of the Shinsengumi and is further impressed by his immense sword pressure. Meanwhile, Kondo cries as he always believed in Okita and he knew that he would become a true samurai. Okita boldly states his title as the captain of the first unit of the Shinsengumi and claims he will make his move. Susano, after witnessing all of this, views it as a reward for himself. Having descended from his god realm and spent countless days alone with his sword, he finally now feels complete and convinced that he was given life for this very moment. Smiling and crying, Susano thanks Okita for this moment, bringing this epic chapter to a close. Wow, good one here. They finally gave us Okita's backstory and based on what was given, this backstory does fit into the backstory that was given to Okita in his manga being Requiem of Shogun, which I go over here in this video. If you do want to watch it, then take this backstory in the Record of Ragnarok as a sequel to my video. Also, if you want to go check that out too, 
then just click the card on the top right or the link in the description. Now really getting into the meat of this chapter, my man Kondo is officially the second best dad. Of course number one being Adam. My dude really took great care of Okita and is the entire reason why Okita is the man he is today. Okita was so uncertain and always doubted himself but Kondo always had his back and loved everything about Okita including his deep inside. What more can you ask from a father? Good man here. Not gonna lie, Okita dying from tuberculosis while his friends were fighting a war was pretty sad. Like imagine being the strongest in your squad but still can't do anything to help. Plus he died all alone too which I don't imagine is pleasant at all. We also finally get an explanation for his demon side and it seems to have been something that he was just born with and serves to be his battle instinct. However, with every great power comes a great price because as Onigo said, this power consumes his body and will kill him. Which does kind of suck because y'all know me, I want my boy Akita to win and survive but at this rate it seems like he's gonna die no matter what. So potentially he could pull a win and die after the match ends or who knows the rumored draw might actually happen. I like Susuno but I don't think he has a chance here since Okita is transformed yet again and is going all out. Time to pack it up Susuno fans. Okita fans be prepared to pack it up too. Unless maybe Okita's Valkyrie could be what prevents him from dying, similar to Thude preventing Raiden's muscles from crushing him, allowing Raiden to use his full strength. Interestingly, his Valkyrie hasn't been revealed yet and even if you say that Onigo is his Valkyrie replacement, then that wouldn't explain how Okita's sword is able to A injure Susano and B be able to clash with a divine weapon that was made from gods and humans together no less. So who knows if that'll get explained someday. If Okita does truly die, then at least he got to fulfill his promise by being a true samurai fighting for his conviction and being able to go all out. You can tell he completed his goal because his eyes turning blue symbolizes the Shinsengumi, meaning Okita has fully accepted Onigo and is finally able to properly control his demon powers. This is evident by the fact that he doesn't look like a red eyed demon anymore but now looks like a true samurai fighting with his conviction. Also he's finally able to fight at 100% full power with his life on the line too. I don't know why but I also totally mess with a shirtless Okita too. Love seeing Onigo and Okita team up and it was cool to see Susano being entirely happy and grateful to Okita for making this awesome moment happen. Respects to Susano. Anyway, we got our pack chapter this month and the conclusion is most likely going to be next month and with all that discussed, you are all free to go. If you made it this far in the video, please like and subscribe if you haven't already and comment your thoughts on the chapter and what you think about Okita's Valkyrie situation. I'm very curious to know your thoughts on the matter and as usual, I love reading all your comments. Thank you all for taking the time out of your busy day to watch my videos. It means a lot. Stay safe out there, be good people, and I'll catch y'all later. Peace.